don't want anyone to feel remorse. Is there anyone who'd like to come up and, and share? <laughs> going, going, gone, okay. Um, so we do have just a couple, I mean, these are wonderful. I, I've been taking notes. I'm going to steal all of your ideas. It's not stealing, it's sharing, it's collaboration. Uh, it's remixing, yes. <laughs> um, but we thought uh, just to kind of start to wrap things up, um, we'd say a couple of words about uh, this. What you are all doing is sort of participating at a couple of moments in this OER life cycle that Carl talked about this morning, right? You've, you've found text or you've rediscovered text that you've already been working with and tried to look at them in new ways. Um, and you've been working through that reading for teaching. You've been working through uh, lessons and how to scaffold that and how to set that up. And, and so we wanted to talk, kind of zoom back out a little bit and think about um, how does this all, what you're engaged in right now, fit into other sorts of professional practices and these other professional life cycles? Um, and so I'm just going to share a couple of thoughts um, from my perspective, more coming from the perspective of a language program director uh, who engages in curriculum development and professional development of instructors, in my case, um, exclusively graduate student instructors, uh, many of whom are very novice instructors. Um, and then Devin's going to share a little bit from her perspective as uh, a graduate student who's now an early career uh, scholar teacher who has also then worked on lessons and worked on publishing lessons. Um, and so I'm going to keep, I'm going to try to keep my part fairly brief. Um, and I'd like to give Devin a chance to, to share her story. Um, and then we have some time for wrap up discussion as well. All right. Let's see if I can refine. Uh, very. The last thing will be a survey, a survey. <laughs> but it's only five minutes. So you can't leave without That's filling out the survey. That's very important. I'm going to run after you and bring that down. So I'm going to try to come at this uh, from sort of two levels, um, just to kind of give you a, a sense of um, how the flight and this OER life cycle uh, contributes both to my work as a curriculum developer, which is something um, that I lead, but I do collaboratively with the graduate students with whom I teach, um, but then also where I see it fitting into processes of, of professional development in our program. Um, and then that'll be kind of the segue to Devin. Um, so this uh, document, uh, is what I call a course map. It's something we develop for every level in our course. And I wanted to show this because we taught, we've mentioned this idea of backward design a couple of times. And we've mentioned this idea of thinking about what are the objectives or the goals for your course. And that flight shouldn't be, you know, the this thing that you bring in that's outside of that scope, but instead is something that's helping you to, uh, to reach those goals. And I would argue even helping you to critically dialogue with your own assumed objectives and, and course goals uh, for uh, the courses that you teach. And so this is something that we set up to help uh, keep myself honest and to help to communicate with those with whom I teach. Um, what are the goals of our course? Um, and then it's going to be in German. It's OK. I'll translate the parts that you need to know about. Um, but then we do this for each unit as well. Uh, and I wanted to mention this because here's an example. This is a, a curriculum we're slightly transitioning away from, but it's going to look quite similar, where we have a, a unit in the textbook that it's your typical thematic sort of structure of its family and friends. Um, and one of the things that the textbook will do is highlight for us the important grammatical structures. So I'm coming from some of the pl same places that many of you are coming from. I have a textbook um, that is telling me to think about uh, themes and think about grammatical structures, right? Um, but what we do is use this course map to sort of subvert that a little bit and instead to say, what are the things that we want students doing with language? Um, and to kind of dialogue that with these structures and themes. Um, and so we want them doing things like talking about friends and family. Um, this is sort of matching up with what Natalia was working on, um, to describe people, especially people who are close to them. Um, but then one of the things that we started developing over the course of these, uh, this unit and these lessons is a um, lesson that's on personal ads. Uh, and this was initiated by Chelsea Timlin. Um, and then developed as, by Chelsea as a flight lesson. Um, and the idea here was to say, OK, when we introduce ourselves and describe people and describe ourselves, this isn't just a neutral thing that we do outside of any context. right? There's not just a set of facts about myself that are default, what I'm always going to say in any context when I describe myself. I do this with a purpose in mind and an audience in mind. Uh, and the singles ads were a really great choice because they're incredibly playful and they're incredibly 
incredibly creative. Um, and for the sake of time, I'm not going to share you the examples, but whoa, people get nutty in their singles ads and imagine fictive identities for themselves, describing themselves as warriors of light who are looking for a beautiful elf to spend the rest of their days with. That is a true singles ad that we actually use. Um, and so there's all this wordplay, there's all this creative play, there's all this literary intertextuality in these little short texts, but they help us to also explore the fact that the self-description is always purposeful and always um, can be creative. There are always choices that you could have made that are different about what you say about yourself when you introduce yourself. And so while the lesson, the flight lesson, was something that kind of developed out of the objectives that we had for the course, and they are practicing those same structures that are very important for this uh, unit as well, not all of them, but many of them, um, it also forced us to kind of push back on, well, what are the objectives of this unit? Don't we need to, people to also think critically about what it means to talk about oneself, critically about how we set up relationships and the media and means and social activities through which we do this? Um, and so in some ways, the dialogue between the course objectives, and the unit level uh, objectives, and the flight has pushed our objectives even further. And I think it continues to do so. And I know Chelsea and Patrick were working on a new lesson, which is probably going to push those objectives even further as we think about what does it mean to teach modal verbs and modality. So that's on the curriculum level, that the flight is something that it's not on the side. It's not something that's deviating from our objectives. It's something that we put in dialogue with those objectives so that we can continue to meet them, but also expand our sense of what's possible in those objectives. The other level, and I don't have Oh, sorry. The other thing that I wanted to mention here um, is then how does that tie into assessment? And Joanna already mentioned um, the formative assessment that we embed within flight lessons. Uh, and some of you have already started to create examples of that, in particular related to those redesign tasks and thinking about, well, how will we assess and give feedback on these redesign tasks? Um, something we do in our curriculum that I wanted to mention that fits more on sort of a summative level of assessment is we do, we do have unit tests. That is a, it's something that just makes sense in the context in which we're teaching. Um, and we often have tasks on those, which are what I'm starting to think about is kind of maybe not flight based, but flight enhanced. So using the singles ads as an example, again, uh, the students have done this activity where they are pushed to play with language, to play with metaphor, to play with self-description in those singles ads, um, not themselves. They do a fictive persona for safety's sake. Um, but on the test, they again have a task where they have to write a sort of singles ad, or in some cases, we've also used a, a sort of less dating ad, but a meetup ad, like you're a study abroad student in Germany and you want to meet new people, come up with an ad. We don't, in that lesson, tell them that you have to engage the litter in the everyday. It's not in the rubric, it's not in the instructions. Um, but what I'm finding anecdotally, and I'm starting to look at that more systematically, is that they do it anyway. And I think part of that is, is that active engaging with these texts, being creative, really digging in with the meaning, that language stays with them. It becomes meaningful to them. And so it ends up showing up and being recycled, even in an in-class paper and pen test where they don't have any of those resources again. Uh, and so I, I'm viewing that as flight enhanced because the task in the test isn't about flight, but flight is coming into those lessons anyway and pushing those students to, to really meet those course objectives and, and then go beyond them. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention quickly is uh, the ways in which this ties into professional development. And I see there, there's sort of a cycle that is similar to what we saw yesterday with the cycles of uh, available designs and designing and redesigns, or recognizing and then engaging critically with and conceptualizing and then transforming. Um, because as these lessons become part of our curriculum and the new instructors come to teach them, they see these as available designs for what lesson planning can look like. They themselves teach those lessons and in that process redesign them in interesting ways and that becomes part of this OER life cycle that keeps starting over again. Um, but then they also are invited to design their own lessons. Um, often we talk about them as being text-based lessons, but many of them end up being flight lessons uh, and they themselves become redesigners of new lessons, taking these models further and giving them a new context um, and new places to work. Um, and so it becomes part of a professional development cycle, not just an individual lesson designing cycle in that way. All right, Devin, can I invite you up to talk a little bit about your experience?
Um, I didn't actually introduce myself, and that was kind of intentional. So my name is Devin Donahue Bergler. I recently finished my PhD in foreign language education um, and wanted to tell you a little bit. Yeah, thank you. Hey. <laughs> the success <Devin>. bow. <laughs> um, so I wanted to share my story a little bit because I was a graduate student um, working with Corey Crane a few years ago, and that's when I first encountered this flight project, this approach. Um, we had something like a one or two hour workshop as part of an orientation where think of all the content you've had in these past two days and condense that into one hour and then one hour of workshop time. So this is how far this project has come in the past two and a half years. So that's really exciting to see. Um, so I worked with a group where we chose a text. It was a really fun text. It had a lot of subversion. We came up with ideas. And then the semester started, and things got busy. And um, then I saw a value. My dissertation project was on drama-based pedagogy. So maybe you know now who chose the improv games yesterday. <laughs> um, and I saw ways to connect. Both were very interested in meaning making and play. Um, these different concepts came together really well. So we kind of pushed forward and went through the process of, OK, here's this lesson. We've got this thing. Let's just do it. Yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. So we got it together, submitted. Um, at that time, we were, uh, I think there was the blind peer review, um, which I think that was probably the time when you were deciding, you know what, let's unblind this. Mm -hmm. At that time, at some point, Chantal unblinded herself, and we met at, I know that sounds. At Actful in a random room somewhere, we like stole a conference room. <laughs> <laughs> But this is where, so thinking of professional development, this was, I think it was 2015 or 16, some, somewhere around there, that we were able to meet in a conference room at, a, at, at the ACTFL conference, and she went through and went through some of the comments that she had given me, which helped with clarification. It got us kind of in a place where we could take those comments really improved the lesson. And I think after, maybe it was a six to nine month process, we made it onto the website. So our lesson now, um, anecdotally, I've heard that both Corey and Chantel at their organizations have been um, encouraging their instructors to teach this lesson and had, had good results. Um, but I wanted to kind of give you the idea of what comes next is that as you finish these lessons, whether it's today or next week or in the middle of the semester, whenever you're ready to submit, please do that. And you'll be getting more feedback to really tweak these lessons, improve these lessons uh, in a way that you'll be able to put a line on your CV. Um, this is a publication in a peer-reviewed uh, outlet. Um, it's also materials development. It's something you can put into your teaching portfolio. Um, and we took it a step further. At some point, I don't remember, there were four of us doing this project together. We, did, we decided to write a paper about it. So this has been something we've been working on for probably a year. Again, revise and resubmit. It's this process of continuing to improve um, what we're doing and seeing the way that things change, it can be frustrating at times. So I don't know if any of you noticed, at lunch I had kind of a moment of, ah, oh, frustration, pulling my hair out. Um, it was actually a really wonderful moment because um, it, was, it was kind of this raw moment of, here's this frustration and here are people who are wanting to help. Um, and during some of this time that you've been working, I've been also working on this paper, so thank you, Corey and Chantel. I've made some really big strides. I've had conversations with Carl about this, and my understanding of flight has also developed in these past few years. So I know Kelly has also taken this workshop before, um, and we discussed how doing this again, we're kind of doing the spiraling where we're understanding different ways of playing with this and preparing it. So in a way, we're doing the same things that we're asking of our students. We're remixing and rethinking and reinterpreting. And that's been really exciting. So. Yeah. Thank you.